Okay, our final hymn this morning, hymn number 213, Jesus is Coming Again. Amen? Amen. Amen. and whirlwinds the anthem prolong Jesus is coming again coming again coming again Jesus is coming again nations are angry by this we do know Jesus is coming Again. All ancient Greece says men run to and fro. Jesus is coming again. Coming again. Coming again. Jesus is coming again. Amen. 
Our speaker, the man in charge of the program today, is Paul Nystrom. <clears throat> I first met Paul when I was in grade school. He was a senior at Mount Ellis Academy. <clears throat> at that time, he played the guitar from time to time and was thought of being one of the best-looking guys on the campus. <clears throat> he, um, he's meant a lot to me in my spiritual growth because not only he plays the, the guitar very well, but he's helped lead me through stories and through his guides when he was the pastor here. And so I was very happy when he was given the opportunity of, of leading us today. And so we ask the Lord to be with him as he speaks and as he sings for us. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity of serving you, Lord. And we know that you are with us. And on this Sabbath day, Lord, we pray that you'll be with Paul that your Holy Spirit may be with him and that he may refresh our souls and bring gladness to our hearts is our prayer. Amen. Amen. Thank you, John. Cute little guy when he was young. <laughs> Still is. <clears throat> I am so thankful and happy to be here. This is just wonderful. Uh, I have driven 1,130 miles from my gate to your door. I checked it. I drove straight here. And it took me two days, of course. <clears throat> Stayed in Boise last night. And I do like some of you guys do. I got in the car at Boise after I filled with gas. I never got out till I got out at this door. So that's a long trip. Can't do that when my wife's along. <clears throat> For some reason. I'll talk to you a little bit, but let me make sure we're in tune and all happy. I have Carter Nolan here and Joni, Joni Nolan and, and, and what's his name back here? Terry. <laughs> <laughs> who's been playing every song that's been played here, I think, this weekend. <clears throat> and Dwayne Kaiser. How many know Dwayne Kaiser? Oh, look at that. Yeah, well, that's good. And you know all the rest of them, and that's just wonderful. And I just uh, told them I'm coming, and I got a few songs we'll do, and here's some chords, and we've never rehearsed. We don't know what we're doing, but we know the name of the songs. <clears throat> And we have dedicated this just say, Holy Spirit, help us play some songs that mean something to you. And that's our plan. By the way, the name of this band is called Rhubarb. <laughs> I don't know why that came to me, but that's... we're called Rhubarb. <clears throat> I'll talk to you a little bit and tell you about some things later, but let's all just sing a song first. We sang it last night. One verse of Sweet By and By. There's a land that is fairer than day. And by faith we can see it afar. For the Father waits over the way to prepare us a dwelling place there in the sweet in the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore in the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore hey you're singing good one more to warm us up a little bit. This world is not my home. I think you know that. At least you know the chorus. This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door. And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh, Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then, Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world any. Do the chorus again, oh, Lord, you know I have no friend like you. 
If heaven's not my home, then Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. The most important song I'm singing might be this next one. The band doesn't know it at all. <laughs> I know it a little. I sang it uh, Easter morning for a church in Montrose, Colorado. I found it on the internet. You probably know it. Have you heard it on my father's side? Have you heard that song? Boy, look at it on the internet. There's a lady that sings it. Anyway, I steal a lot of songs from the internet these days. <clears throat> this is one I stole, and I'm so glad. One, two, three, four. Just a young boy in the temple one day shared with the doctors they were so amazed. This is Jesus in the temple. Never had they seen one so young speak so swift. They asked him many questions. Conversation went like this. What's your name, son? Well, on my mother's side, my name is Jesus but on my father's side it's Emmanuel well how old are you son on my mother's side now I'm 12 years but on my father's side I've just always been well where are you from on my mother's side I'm from Bethlehem but on my father's side it's new Jerusalem well what's your plan on my mother's side I'll be crucified but on my father's side in three days I'll arise and I'll sit by my father's side he was the son of God Yet he was the son of man. I can't help but wonder what Joseph must have thought. When through an open door that day, he heard his son's reply. He said, you see, I'm the king of kings. That's on my father's side. Well, what's your name, son? On my mother's side. My name is Jesus. But on my father's side, they call me Emmanuel. Well, how old are you? On my mother's side. Now I'm 12 years, but on my father's side, I've just always been. Where are you from, son? On my mother's side. I'm from Bethlehem, but on my father's side. It's New Jerusalem. Well, what's your plan? On my mother's side, 
I'll be crucified on my father's side in three days I'll arise I'll arise and I'll sit at my father's side is that quite a song yeah I like that let's go over rhubarb to a place in the choir <laughs> this is a fun song I like to do those now and then. the kids around the country are singing this at camps and in the Sabbath school Sunday schools I don't know if you know it here you know the place in the choir all God's critters got a place in the choir <laughs> oh that's a good song and it talks about what the point is, is that all of us have a place in here whether you sit there 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 whether you're pastor or janitor or whatever you do here you've all got a place and you need to fulfill your place and be happy about it it's called all God's creatures got a place in the choir and it goes like this let's go about one Come on, rhubarb. <clears throat> All God's critters got a place in the choir. Some sing low, some sing higher, some sing out loud on the telephone wire. Some just clap their hands or pause or whatever they got. Now listen to the bass. It's the one on the bottom. Bullfrog croaks and the hip. Hippopotamus moans and groans with a big to do, and the old cow just says moo. All God's critters got a place in the choir. Some sing low, some sing higher, some sing out loud on the telephone wire. Some just clap their hands or paws or anything they got. Now the cat, listen, let's see, it's verse. Two, that would be the cats and the duck. I have to read these words because I can't memorize it. The cats and the dogs, they take up the middle where the honeybee hums and the crickets fiddle. The donkey brays and the pony neighs and the old gray badger sizes. Singing in the night time, singing in the day. Little duck quacks and he's on his way. The otter hasn't got very much to say and the porcupine talks to himself. All God's critters got a place in the choir. Some sing low, some sing higher, some sing out loud on the telephone wire. Some just clap their hands or paws or anything they got. Now it's a simple song, a little song everywhere. Ox and the fox and the grizzly bear, the grumpy alligator and the hawk above. Sly old weasel and the turtle dove. Well, all God's critters got a place in the choir. Some sing low, some sing higher, some sing out loud with the telephone wire. Some just clap their hands or paws or anything they got now. I don't know how to shut this song off. Now let's do the, <clears throat> I want to do now the next song. We'll settle this thing down a little bit. This is a great song. It's Master of the Wind. Let's find that one. You know that one? Ooh, I, I bring you songs that I think you don't know very well. That way you won't know if I'm doing them right or wrong. <laughs> But this has a wonderful message. Enjoy it. Give G. My boat of life sails on a troubled sea. That's nice, Joni. Whenever there's a wind in my sail. But I have a friend who watches over me when the breeze turns into a gale I know the master of the wind I know 
the maker of the rain. He can calm the storm, make the sun shine again. I know the master of the wind. Sometimes I soar like an eagle through the sky. Above the peaks my soul can be found. An unexpected storm may drive me from the heights. Brings me low never brings me down I know the master of the wind I know the maker of the rain I know the maker of the rain He can calm the storm Make the sun shine again. I know the master of the rain. He can calm the storm. He can make the sun shine again. I know the master of the wind <clears throat> let me talk to you a little bit you guys go over the steel guitar song there in the garden would you figure it out <laughs> you got the chord you got the yep. you're doing good you having fun <laughs> I am too. I uh, live in Montrose, Colorado. I was here for, uh, I was a member of this church. I, I forget all the years, but a few. And then I pastored it for some more. And I think I left in 74. Is that right? Somewhere it's written. And that's right, whatever it was written. <laughs> and uh, I got to tell you, this was the most blessed time I ever enjoyed as a pastor of a church. Amen. I was a pastor of the school. <laughs> That's where we had church. When I think of Hoodview, I don't think of this place. I think of over there. Because just as we were starting to build this, then that's when I was leaving and went to Minnesota. And I was youth director in that state and the communications and did all that. And then I went to Arizona. And then I got tuckered out. I really did. And I just said, I'm going to go someplace and take a break. So I got a leave of absence. And it's been 30-some years. <laughs> and I've had a blessed life. And uh, I have a ministry down there in the city of Montrose in the surrounding area in that valley. It's called the Eagle Valley Ministries. And uh, I minister to the community. I do many. I go to various churches and fill in their pulpit if they have a pastor sick or gone or on vacation. I do an average of two funerals a week, most of them for various churches. And uh, the reason they like me is because I don't preach long and I sing their songs and they only have to pay one price. <laughs> <laughs> so the funeral homes call me a lot. In fact, I have a call this morning. Keith Ellis died and his wife Carol called and wants me to get home, so I'll do that. But I'm always scheduled for a few notes. It seems one or two a week. Uh, my children are grown. <laughs> Where's Betty? Did Betty go home to eat breakfast? <laughs> anyway, Betty Parks. Bless her, she was a little gal, same age as my daughter, and just cute as she could be. My daughter lives in Montrose near me. She has three 
kids, which are my grandchildren, and that's all. Debbie's 56 this summer. How can that be? Because I'm hardly that old. <laughs> I'm 77, and glad to be. There's not a good alternative. Uh, Daniel, my uh, oldest son, is uh, married. He has uh, three dogs, Carver Spaniels, no kids. So I have grand dogs there. And um, David is, oh, David, Danny is a CPA. He went to La Sierra, got a CPA test. And he, last thing he worked for was Disney in San Francisco, Disney Enterprises. And then they moved to Florida. He didn't want to go to Florida. So he stayed there, and he's doing consulting and doing some other stuff. I don't know what he's doing, but he's working and making money. And David, remember David? Little laundry kid. He was always the one uh, right over here where I, we lived in Hofmeister. He's the kid that built him wings out of boards with uh, ropes you could tie him on. And he got on top of the chicken house and flew. <laughs> I went and saw that chicken house last night. It's still there. And David actually lived through that and uh, doesn't do that anymore. But he is a pilot. So is Daniel. So am I. We, are all, we all like to fly. It's a little bit expensive now, so we don't fly so very much. But I owned my plane for about 15 years in Minnesota and Arizona. Uh, Lois is was my wife when I was here. She married Russ Taylor. Is Russ here? Did he by any chance make it? Good guy. You remember him? I remember Russ Taylor. He's having a rough time. He's not well, and Lois has Alzheimer's. And she's had it, oh, like for three years. They lived in uh, down south here. <laughs> Klamath Falls, thank you. I'm 77. <laughs> Help me. But now they live up in the Tri-Cities area, Pasco, Kennewick, Washington. And he found her a nice place to stay. It's got about five or six people there, and they take really good care of her. And luckily, she's happy there. That is just so good. She's got friends there. She tried to leave a couple times, but there's a little gal there that said, I'm going to cry if you leave. And so Lois has just doesn't care to go home anymore. She just wants to stay there and be with those people. And she gets good care, and it's, it's very nice. And, of course, Russ is doing much better since he doesn't have to care for her. So I won't dwell on that anymore. But anyway, they're doing fine as they can do with that condition. Uh, there's a lot of people die of Alzheimer's nowadays. <clears throat> I have a lot of funerals. I have a little poem, I didn't bring it to you, but it'd make you cry. A little guy about 12 years old wrote it about his grandmother, about her Alzheimer's and how he lost her a year or two ago, you know. He says, we still have your body, but we don't have you. And that, that's very sad. But God will make it all turn out okay. Let me, is there any questions? I'm halfway through my time, so I'm happy to talk about that. But I have lots of other things to say. I'm not going to preach, but I want to tell you about this. <laughs> you like that? Yeah. I do too. I'll put it out here so you can kind of see it as I talk. Um, I went out to the Montrose County dump one day. Get a good picture of this thing, would you? <laughs> You're still there. <clears throat> um, it was snowing. It was about six inches of snow. And I dumped my stuff and was going to go home. But then sometimes my, when I'm at the dump, I shop. <laughs> it's kind of like Walmart to me. <laughs> Except the prices are better. <laughs> I, I saw part of a guitar sticking out of the snow. And, of course, I had to go investigate. Every time I see a guitar, I have to go see. And I pulled it out, and the neck was broken clear off. 
the uh, hole inside was full of sparrow nest and other stuff that sparrows do, or pigeons. I, don't, I think it was sparrows that lived in it, and uh, it was just really bad shape. But I noticed that it had a perfect top. It was not cracked. It was not broken. So I took it in my pickup, and we went home, and I hung it on the wall and began to study that and think about it and think, well, that could have been a good guitar. It was an Epiphone 12 string is what it was, and it was just solid on top, but the rest was all beat up. So any day, one day I got an inspiration, and uh, I couldn't put the neck back together. So I got a two-by-two two piece of oak, and the oak... Goes, here's the oak. Starts there, goes all the way through, and in here with a big bolt and screws in there. There's no way that neck's going to bend. <laughs> and then I just got some Bondo. You know about Bondo? <laughs> and began to fill cracks and all the spaces that I couldn't fill with wood, I filled with Bondo. And worked it all out. I went and I bought me a fretboard from a place down at Nashville that has those. I bought me a pickup, electric pickup. I uh, got me a brass bolt. And made my, this is three-eighths and this is a half. And they worked just fine. And then I got me some John Deere paint <laughs> at the John Deere store. <laughs> Green and yellow, and we had a, the reason I tell you this, we find a lot of people in life that just think, you know, I'm lost, I'm done, I'm no good, I'm full of sparrow stuff, <laughs> I'm bent, I'm broken, I'm under snow, I'm cold. There's no use. And what a Savior we have. Fear not, for I bring you tidings of great joy. You can be a whole person. You can make music in this world. All God's critters got a place in the choir. And so I fired it up and uh, play it. You want to hear it? I thought so. <laughs> Sounds like a diesel. <laughs> diesel fitter. Um, it, it, ha it backslid. Uh, two months ago about the bridge that was a lonely bridge right here that the hook strings were hooked into cracked. Couldn't play it. No use. I thought, well, is that the end of the guitar? No. Even though it had backslidden and broken up a little bit, I took the power that I had within me, and I took that bridge off and scraped it away and went down to the Recla Metal place. <laughs> That's where I get my stuff. This wasn't the dump, but I had to buy a piece. A little For $9, I bought a big sheet of aluminum, and I cut this piece out. And that is aluminum, and I leveled it all out, and I worked on it day after day, just honing it, sanding it until it was perfect. Then I painted it with a brand new John Deere paint, yellow. Then I put some bolts. These bolts go right through to the oak. It will never break again. That's the way with our Lord. I don't care if you break here and there. Just keep trusting and let him just come in and fix you up. You just keep him moving. Okay, let's play. I think this will all work. I play with a half pound of steel. That's how these things work. I think I'm in tune. We're going to play in the garden. One, two, three, one, two.
I have a CD out that uh, all the songs are played by that guitar. And if you wonder how to get a hold of me to get one of those, uh, you know, call Terry. <laughs> or Nolan's, or the church pastor, and get my phone number. I got, I've done 16 CDs in my life now. Well, some of them were records, <laughs> vinyl records. They make good Frisbees now. And then I did, even, I go to Salvation Army and I see some 8-tracks that I did. And cassettes and all those things. Anyway, hit me at Kia C. We're going to do Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus in those songs. Can you do that? Sure. All right. I want you to sing. Here's some choruses we sing when I was in Academy and when we were here, what, 50 years ago? <clears throat> Where's the C? Okay, sing. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace do it again turn your eyes upon jesus look full in his wonderful face and the things of earth will grow In the light of his glory and grace. Where's a D? Hit a D. Pick up the tempo. One, two, three, four. I've got a home in glory land. I'll shine the sun. I've got a home in glory land that I'll shine the sun. I've got a home in glory land that outshines the sun way beyond the blue. I took Jesus, I took Jesus as my Savior, you take him too. I took Jesus as my Savior, you take him too. I took Jesus as my Savior, you take him too. Way beyond the blue. Do, do, Lord, oh, do, Lord, oh, do remember me. Do, Lord, oh, do, Lord, oh, do remember me. Do, Lord, oh, do, Lord, oh, do remember me. Way beyond the blue. How would you like to sing in the key of A? Where's an A? <laughs> oh, let's do uh, Into My Heart. Into my heart, into my heart, come into my heart, Lord Jesus, come into Come in to stay, come into my heart, Lord Jesus. I love those little choruses. Key of C, for God so loved the world. <clears throat> for God so loved the world, he gave his only son. To die on Calvary's My time is running out. Doesn't an hour go by fast? I want to tell you a little story. 
It was midnight, almost 37,000 feet above the earth. And a 737 was traveling, full of people. The lights came on, the stewardess came on her microphone and said, Ladies and gentlemen, sit down immediately. We're going to have rough weather. There's a storm. We can't get out of it. We can't go around it. We've got to go through it. So everybody buckled up tight, sat down, and boy, it hit. And that airplane went up and down and around and sideways, and people were screaming and hanging on and throwing up and crying. Well, there was a man sitting about halfway back <clears throat> on the aisle, and he noticed a little girl up front on the left with her light on reading a book. And in the midst of all this chaos and trouble, she was reading her book every now and then. She'd put it down and think about what she's reading, I guess. Then she'd read some more. And yeah, she was bouncing around, but she had a very pleasant smile on her face. Well, they got through that storm and the other side, and oh, were they glad to get on the ground. The door opened, and the people went out, and the man who was watching her sat there because she stayed on. And he said, I've got to find out about this little gal. So when everyone was off, he walked up to her and he said, Honey, I saw you during this storm and through all this chaos and all this rough weather. You're just at peace and you're reading your book and you're not afraid. How come? She looked up at him with her big blue eyes and said, Because my daddy's the pilot. And I know. He'll take me home safely. Boy, that all of us could have that feeling. That's what I want everyone in this world to know, especially this church this morning. God is your pilot. Let him be your pilot. Amen. Amen. Don't worry. Read your book. <laughs> Think about it. Rejoice in the fact that God is your pilot and he's going to take you home. There's power in that thought. It's called faith. How shall the just live? By faith. I haven't figured this out. I've been a minister for so long and a Christian longer, and how can it be that if you just believe, you can spend eternity in heaven? Isn't that too easy? Let me figure out something I can do to work my way up there. There's some things I can't, won't do, so I can get up there. No, he says, faith. Your faith has made you whole. And I like the idea, if you need to do this sometime, I probably told you this years ago, if you have to, go get a stick and lay it on the ground and be on one side of it and say, there's my faith and there's eternity, and step over that stick and say, now I'm on God's side. I've exercised faith. Now I'm here. That was there, but now I'm here. And so my prayer for you this morning is that you all will exercise that faith and say, now I'm here. I'm in God's hands. He's my pilot. I have nothing to worry about. I just need to sit in my seat <laughs> and trust him, and he'll take care of you. Loving God. This will be our last song. Uh, this is a Gaither song. You've seen it on TV maybe a number of times. But if I, had, uh, if I had the ability to write this song, I would have. It's called Loving God. And it's very simple. And I want you, I'm want going to tell you the words and you can sing it along with me. He pushed back from the table to listen they pushed back. This is disciples pushed back from the table, and now they're listening to his word. The secret plan before he had to go. It's not complicated. Don't need a lot of rules. This is all you need to know. It's loving God, loving each other. That a boy, Dwayne. 
making music with my friend. It's loving God, loving each other, and the story never ends. We tend to make it harder, build steeples out of stone. You know what? I'm going to finish this song, but I remember being right up there <laughs> cleaning bricks with a wire brush and acid. <laughs> Did you, some of you do that? That was a few years ago. I hope it's still clean. The church members, we did some stuff. We didn't have to do a lot because we had a nice contractor. But I remember doing that, and this church was going up. And just about the time it got ready to inhabit is when I left. <laughs> we tend to make it harder. Build steeples out of stone. Fill books with explanations of the way. But if we'd stop and listen and break a little bread, we would hear the master say it's loving god it's loving god loving each other loving each other making music with my friends making music with my friend, loving God, loving each other, loving God, loving each other. And the story never ends. Do it again. Loving God, loving each other. Loving each other, making music with my friends, making music with my friends. Loving God, loving each other, and the story never. I thank you for letting, allowing me to be here. It has been such a joy to see some of you again, all of you again. <laughs> well, maybe there's one or two. <laughs> no, all of you. But I was thinking I don't know all of you now. But uh, you who I know, it's good to see you again. And you who I don't know, it's good to see you here. God bless you. Thank you for joining with me in this hour. Do you want me to say a prayer? I'd like to do that. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the joy that we've seen in each other's faces this morning. For the music that we've sung, the words that give us courage and hope. I thank you for these guys behind me and the lady at the piano who played and did such a good job. And Bruce over there too. Lord, I pray for this congregation. Give them joy. Give them Give them a love for each other that just goes all over the world and all over this state and all over the county because love is where it's at. We thank you for being our Savior, for saving us and being master of the wind. Amen. <laughs>